can I ask you a question? Yeah. We were having, having a discussion today about rebirth. Mm -hmm. About rebirth. Yeah. Um, and the difference between rebirth and reincarnation. Is there a difference? Really speaking, it isn't rebirth. It's birth dependent on. In other words, first dependent on the previous come and you come Yes, that's true. But there is not something which goes from here to there. Because the, the, what, what we both are concerned with is the five khandas. Five khandas. Who is concerned with the five khandas? Um, you have to have something there of the khandas which goes on, like this. But that doesn't. Nothing which will go wrong. Can't just die completely. All of them. But the chitta doesn't die. And the chitta doesn't, it doesn't, isn't involved in re rebirth in the sense that it's reborn. Mm. It isn't, it's just a continuum. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, that because of how we are, we don't see that. And because of how we are, when, when we come to time of death, they're terrific wanting to live. Mm -hmm. So grasp. And you grasp another life. And the grasping comes from the from the uh, Chaitanya, mm -hmm. which is um, so sort of set up by the Kilesas, by by also by the Kama. Kama that person makes them want to live. And making a one want to live involves the kilesas. Must involve the kilesas. And so they, they grasp. And um, as all the um, practicing bhikkhus say, they're not afraid of death, they're afraid of their birth. Because they don't know where they can go. Mm. <laughs> it's, just, it's a chitta that grasps another five kandas. It's Let's in the chitta, yes. It's the working of the chitta. Uh, associated with kamma and the kilesas. So you, you don't actually call it a soul? This person's... It's, yes, what, come, what arises from that is something new. But the, the kandas, the kilesas go on. And the kandas go on. Mm. The effect is what you tell. <coughs> so whatever kilesas that you may have managed to well, they survive. Redu reduce or subdue, you would carry on to the, to the next birth? They carry on, but you never know, because kilesas, uh, mm. because the, the, the kamma that one has, it can go and jump to any any place of kamma, where there's kamma. It hasn't, hasn't, hasn't actually come to fruition. And it can go, it can be, be kamma immediately from the previous environment, or from um, a thousand years ago. We just don't know. We have to develop the panya. Seeing the bodies part of it. Also seeing the nature, the change can go. Is, is that what you were saying yesterday about uh, just allowing the chitta to to be free and come up with its own? Yes, one must. Yes, yes. But if that that. The, you have to have a certain amount of samadhi to to get there, to allow that. Um, no, what is the, the, what's necessary? You must have enough samadhi to prevent the uh, whirling thoughts mm -hmm. go cause trouble. They, they they need to be stopped really. But. Um, uh, To see the chitta like that is, if one, if one leaves it free, it'll go to where it's necessary, where it's automatic. 
the master goes in the right place. If one tries to do it for oneself, it usually it goes all wrong. <coughs> because the self has cascilases involved with it. And the, the aim of this, I mean seeing the body change into an old body like that, it shows up the impermanence of everything in each other. And this is one of the things that's very important. So, so is that just something that would happen to anyone if they get into a certain level of samadhi or is it certain personalities or certain things? It, it, it's, it's, it's a typical, it's typical, but it doesn't happen the same way for everyone. It's the sort of thing that happens. And to see it like that is, is very valuable. Very. When it's seen like that, it goes in quite deep too, because, because one hasn't tried to do it, it's come up automatically. So it's a fair, an affair of the chitta. It, it, it goes into the chitta. Also, you can see how this, this sort of thing, when one sees like that, it shows up the hollowness of the world, the hollowness of the world, are the whole world's empty. There's nothing really substantial in it at all. It's all just coming and going. So when you say from there to go on to develop Panya, you then... Well, that is Panya. When one, when one starts thinking like that, that is the Panya, Panya. But one mustn't think that Samadhi and Panya have got two distinct, there's a boundary there where yes. it turns. It isn't like that. Yeah. The Samadhi and the Panya, in fact, the, the skill is to have the Samadhi and the Panya there together. And if one can do that, that, that works very well. Really, really powerful. I was reading the um, Ajahn Man, or the biography, um, just a couple of pages at the beginning, it said that he had powers to communicate with the with the Deva realm and the Naga realm and, yes. and the spirit realm. Yes. Is that a very unusual um, ability? Or would, would most people who became enlightened have that? Um. I don't really know, but I, I, I would guess that um, the most majority of who came in like me, I'd say you'd get about, um, oh, what, 50% maybe have been able to do that. Right. Mm. The reason I ask you is because we have this lady called uh, Mother Mahavira in Melbourne. <laughs> yes. She, um, she's an association called the Infinite Wisdom Society, mm. yes. which is a branch in, in the U.S. Yes. And um, we often talk to that, the Naga realm and the Deva realm and what goes on. Oh, yes. 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 And, um, and she's very believable in the way yes. she talks yes. about it. Yes. She lives well, a very, very simple life and um, yeah. she looks like she lives ten precepts at least. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's curious. Yes, she was. Uh, um, quite, quite a lot of people like that can, can contact the day where um, a lot, as much fewer can get up to the Brahma realm, <laughs> the higher realms. Yeah. But the whole lot one has to realize it's all samsara. It's all samsara, it's yeah. all impermanent, changing. Is the same 
as we learn and that in Buddhism there is a soul. It's a chitta. The, the trouble with the word soul is that nobody knows what it means. Yes, but in, in, the, in the Christian sense, soul is a, is a permanent entity, isn't it? I think so. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that's not, not the way in Buddhism. But chitta is one of the five hundred. No. Not the five kandhas. The five kandhas are all connected with the world. Sita is not. Sita doesn't die. And Sita is the, the fundamental, really, you can say, uh, the pure Sita is fundamentally what we should all be. That's the Arahant. Pure Sita. So what happens at, at the of death of um, it, it, it's something which nobody can say. There's no concept because the nature of uh, samsara is, is impermanence. Everything is impermanent. There's nothing static at all. And impermanence means that you can't find any real thing because there's nothing that remains. Even for a moment, it's all changing. Whereas Nibbana is, is not impermanent. How can you say it's permanent? Both don't apply. Then all the categories don't apply to Nibbana. And because of that, what happens to the Arahant after death is something that's completely beyond the world. It's, the world can't understand. But it's, it's, um, it's something that uh, the people who get there, they say, of course, it must be like that. There's no other way. This is, it's the truth. What it is, it's the one who knows. It can only go by its characteristics. And it's the one who knows all the time. Knowing is the nature of the fitted. But it doesn't mean to say one always knows rightly. One only knows rightly if one's got purity. <coughs> um, but the, but the nature of knowing, the chitta, when when Vijnana is presented as an object, then the chitta joins up and becomes Vijnana. <laughs> Vijnana, I take it, means uh, dualistic, goes dualistic, because it means we is to, to divide, and jnana, divide in knowing. <laughs> it means the chitta becomes two, the objects and the subjects. And because it's that nature, that and it's impermanent, this is in Sankara. It means and it has to come up again. It needs to disappear again, again, again. All things uh, changing all the time. But when it when it revert back to the chitta, the pure chitta. And that change they don't take place like that. So in, in, in the Satipatthana when you do Chitana Pasana, hmm. is that what is arising in the Chitana? The people who are watching and... Oh, oh, I must understand the, the um, Satipatthana. The whole of that, in fact the whole of the teaching of the Buddha, his method. It's a method of uh, leading to Nibbana. And the, the, the whole of the teaching of the Buddha is not Lokutra. It's not beyond the world. Because to go beyond the world is to go what, what, beyond what people in the world understand. So it should be no use. And so the Buddha was clever and he he, he saw that you've got to give them 
with people, something they can work on, something they can really do. And so he taught the, the uh, doctrine of uh, having the view with a view. And that view is the view of, it's the right view leading to Nirvana. But it's not, one never, you must never think that, the doc, that the, what the Buddha taught is absolutely true. It's not absolute. The absolute you can't say anything about. It's way beyond. <laughs> it's like the nature, the Arahant say, the, the nature of the pure chitta is emptiness. Meaning, it's empty, empty of all this, empty of the world. But what's empty of the world, we can't imagine what it is. We don't know. It goes beyond. And the purpose is to get beyond, and it's, it's as though they say, that they're telling us, that is what we should all be. That's the right state. This state we're in now, is, is muddled up and sort of caught up with all sorts of wrong things in wrong ways. We all have the pure chitta, it's just that it's clouded by the, the, the ten different. No, we can't call it the pure chitta then, because there's not two chittas. If you have the pure chitta and the defiled chitta, you have to have two. You can't be like that. The, the, the defiled chitta, is the one that does all the work with the world and sort of messing about as most people do. But when you when you destroy the kilesas, that chitta goes pure. Right. And it's easy to do the same. Okay. That happens. But pure chitta doesn't exist there separately okay. at all. When it gets close to the theme of Nibbana, uh, it's difficult to, it gets difficult to, to work with it because what we used to is a world where words have logical meanings. Uh, uh, it becomes difficult to get near on the right because really it makes it empty, empty, empty of the world. And because it's empty of the world, um, I've got nothing to pin on at all. I don't think what freedom means, or complete freedom, it means no limits, no bounds.